Good morning, distinguished members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Victor Ladukan, and I'm the Director of Communication and External Relations at the African Development Bank. It's a wonderful pleasure having you with us here today um, for this press conference in which we'll be making a very important and I believe game-changing announcement that really will have tremendous implications for Africa's economic and social development. With us today, we have the Honorable Premier of Hauteng Province, David Malimola Makura, the President of the African Development Bank, Dr. Akemumi Adeshna, senior members of the bank and Hauteng government, as well as representatives of the Minister of Finance and leading members of the Hauteng business community who help make Hauteng the seventh largest economy in Africa. The format today includes brief presentations by the Premier and the President of the Bank, after which we'll proceed with a Q&A session. At this point, I'd like to hand over proceedings to my dear friend and colleague, Bronwyn Nielsen of CNBC Africa. Once again, thank you very much for joining us. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much, Victor. CNBC Africa has had the pleasure of, introducing of interviewing President Adesina for many, many years. First in his capacity as the Minister of Agriculture in Nigeria, and since September 2015 as the President of the African Development Bank. Over that eight-year period, what CNBC Africa can emphatically tell you is that this is a man who is true to a word. He generally sets a vision and then he executes on it. And in Davos earlier this year, he did exactly that in his CNBC Africa interview. Dr. President, Dr. and President Adashina sat down and spoke of the Africa Investment Forum and the imminent launch. And ladies and gentlemen, here we are today at the inaugural launch. Without further ado, it is my pleasure to welcome to the podium Dr. Akinwumi Adashina, President of the African Development Bank. Thanks very much, Browning. Your Excellencies, esteemed guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and thank you all for coming today. I am particularly delighted that the Premier of Houting Province, Mr. Malemola Makura, is here with us today with many leading CEOs of top African businesses, many of them here in South Africa. I am delighted that Minister of Finance, my dear friend Nene, is also represented here by Ms. Wumedlini, Head of International and Regional Policies. And we also have representing South Africa at the bank, your own Executive Director, Magoshi, that is here with us uh, today. I'm equally very pleased that we are joined by many leading CEOs of top African businesses, um, as well as many media houses that are here. I know you like Vuvuzelas uh, in South Africa. And I hope that from here we can hand the sounds of many Vuvuzelas out to Africa on investment. I would like to thank in particular His Excellency President Cyril Ramaphosa and his government for their strong support for the African Development Bank and their commitment to the need for accelerated development in Africa. The time for that is here and a time for which we need game changes. I am here to tell you what is probably the most important game-changing in, in investment initiative for accelerated economic development undertaken in Africa. It is called the Africa Investment Forum. It's a unique platform for investment, finance, transparent transactions, and a genuine African marketplace for closing deals to accelerate the economic development of Africa. But first, let me set the scene. Though faced with quite a number of obvious challenges, Africa is growing economically resilient. On multiple levels, we are swimming with a fast-moving current of global finance, trade, and economic growth. But we must go faster. And why? We have much ground to cover, and the world is now standing still. With an eye on a future that is already upon us, we must scan the horizon. Today, Africa has a population of 1.2 billion people. By 2050, 
just 32 short years from now, our growing population will tip the scales to a whopping 2 billion people. In the process, we will overtake the populations of China and India combined together. That is a huge asset for Africa and an asset that we must unlock. Think about it. By 2030, the combined consumer demand and business spending in Africa are expected to reach 6.7 trillion US dollars. Again, our task is how to fully unlock these potentials. Ultimately, however, leadership is about anticipating the future long before it arrives. We have no other choice than to act in the now and turn our challenges into opportunities that will benefit generations yet to come. Therefore, if Africa is to achieve a genuine, equitable, and sustainable economic transformation, it cannot be by business as usual. It must be business unusual. To start with, Africa's infrastructure financing needs are estimated to be between 130 and 170 billion US dollars per year. However, total commitments came to just about 63 billion dollars in 2016. As it has been for decades, national governments are still the main providers of infrastructure finance in Africa. This represents a financing gap of approximately 67 to 107 billion US dollars in just infrastructure alone. But the overall investment gap for Africa to achieve overall economic development is actually much higher and stands at $200 billion to $1.2 trillion a year. These are definitely huge numbers, but I'm not scared of huge numbers anyway, because our populations are growing very, very fast and we must act very quickly. The fact is, however, no individual benefactor, no matter how rich, or government, or sovereign wealth fund, or even a multilateral development bank for that matter, can provide the resources to meet Africa's critical economic development needs. While the African Development Bank and many other multilateral partners and donors are making significant contributions, this still does not close that gap. But Africa can, and Africa must do so. First, each year, Africa collects $500 billion in tax revenues, $60 billion in foreign direct investment, $50 billion in foreign aid, $60 billion in remittances, and the numbers are improving. Within Africa, the assets under management of domestic institutional investors will rise to $1.8 trillion by 2020, tripling from the current $634 billion. Most of this money, however, isn't invested in Africa, but Africa should invest in its own development if it wants others to do so. It is a tall order, but the money is certainly there and available globally. By 2020, there will be close to 111 trillion US dollars of assets under management globally that are invested around the world, often, as you know, at very low interest rates. Our task is to leverage a significant share of these savings into Africa's economic development. Financing Africa's development has to be a collective and cooperative task, requiring broad partnerships with the private sector and an appreciation of the realities of global investment patterns. It may sound like a cliche, but it certainly is not. The good news is that Africa is the next investment frontier. But we need to bridge the gap between available capital and bankable projects, problems that hinder closure for potentially bankable projects must be resolved in new win-and-win win -win arrangements for the private sector. Investment equity funds, development finance institutions, the public sector, and other relevant stakeholders. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the essential reason for the Africa Investment Forum, a multi-stakeholder, multidisciplinary platform that will bring together collaborative leadership for the purpose of creatively and strategically transforming economic and social development in Africa. The Africa Investment Forum will provide an open platform to organize efforts among multilateral institutions, 
the private sector, and governments to improve a pipeline of projects capable of transforming this beautiful continent. In short, the Africa Investment Forum will be an Africa investment marketplace where the African Development Bank and its partners will screen and enhance bankable projects, attract co-investors, and facilitate transactions to close Africa's investment gaps. This unprecedented platform will reduce intermediation costs, improve the quality of project information and documentation, and increase active and productive engagements between African governments and the private sector. Preparatory work on these engagements has already begun and will continue throughout the year. This first ever Africa Investment Forum will be held 7 to 9th of November right here in Johannesburg, South Africa. It is not a one-time event, just to be sure. It will be a permanent platform that will help fast track the implementation of commitments from previous fora. There will be five work streams. You know, I like five things. The project preparation stream will work closely with Africa 50, the Infrastructure Consortium for Africa, and the NEPAD Infrastructure Project Preparation Facility, among others, in order to scale up project preparation facilities and tools. The second work stream, pipeline development, will help to develop investment-ready projects sourced by the African Development Bank and the external development finance partners. The third one, the risk mitigation and credit enhancement work stream will include a co-guarantee platform that will help to develop and deploy innovative risk sharing instruments that will help to take private sector investments to scale. This platform and this facility lies at the heart of the Africa Investment Forum. And I must tell you, this is the first time that in the multilateral development finance community that all of us, we have ourselves, African Development Bank, we have the World Bank, the International Finance Corporation, the Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank, we have the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, we have the Islamic Development Bank, we also have the Multilateral Investment Guarantee Agency. We are all on the same platform. The first time that has happened anywhere in the world. So this tells you that we are talking big stuff here with regard to Africa. Another work stream, of course, would bring together all these global and domestic global in uh, investors to examine, encourage, and promote appropriate investments in Africa. And finally, the Africa Investment Forum will focus on improving the ease of doing business in Africa by advancing and promoting investment-friendly regulations and also championing ethical business practices in Africa. We are using strategic alliances and partnerships to remove well-known obstacles to finance, especially those created by false perception that investment in Africa is somehow more risky than comparable investments elsewhere. We must ensure that African companies can compete fairly and are able to secure adequate and appropriate funding for their operations. For this, we must counter these false perceptions with simple truths. Governments, development finance institutions, and the private sector are thinking and acting in new and innovative ways and well beyond traditional bank lending. Several multilateral development banks will be joining us, as I said, to accelerate private investments at this event, creating a new stream or mainstream of development financing. The Africa Investment Forum will therefore become Africa's own investment marketplace for accelerated economic transformation. And this will be no talking shop. It will be a unique forum. It will be 100% transactional. There will be no political speeches. The only thing allowed will be transactions, transactions, and transactions to accelerate Africa's economic development. The time is ripe for such a bold initiative. The aggregate growth for the continent is a solid three point, was a solid 3.6% in 2017, projected to go to 4.1% in 2018 and 2019. The recovery from 2016 has been fast, especially among non-resource rich economies. Governance is improving across the continent. The World Bank's doing business 2017 report indicates that 34 out of 48 countries in sub-Saharan Africa had at least one significant business regulatory reform in the previous year. 
Africa is on an encouraging growth trajectory. Markets are expanding. Our massive youth population is ready and eager to work. A middle class with disposable income is increasing fast every year. Foreign direct investment is once again on the rise. The strategic blueprints are there. At the African Development Bank, we have what we call the high fives for the bank, to light up and power Africa, to feed Africa, to industrialize Africa, to integrate Africa, and to improve the quality of life of the people of Africa. And as the United Nations pointed out, if Africa achieved these high fives, it will have achieved 90% of the sustainable development goals and 90% of Agenda 2063. So the African Development Bank, your bank, is committed to working with all partners and stakeholders for the success of this Africa Investment Forum. It's time for collaborative partnership. We count on your support to make this happen and for it to be the biggest collective investment opportunity of any African generation. These are extra, there are extraordinary deals to be had in Africa. The Africa Investment Forum is a perfect position, is in perfect position to identify and to shape these deals for investors, fund managers, and others managing substantial assets. Together, let's offer the world a collective deal of the century for investment and development of Africa. The place and location for that is set. The Africa Investment Forum, Johannesburg, South Africa, 7 to 9th of November 2018. I look forward to seeing you there, and thank you. Dr. Akinwumi Arashina, President of the African Development Bank. And speaking about turning Africa's challenges into opportunities for generations to come. So I'm going to pick up on the mantra, which I think is going to become the mantra of the Africa Investment Forum. Transactions, transactions, transactions. And on that note, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the man who is leading the seventh largest economy across the African continent, and that is the Honorable Premier of Gauteng Province, David Makura. Thank you. Thank you, Bronwyn and Victor. Uh, the President of the African Development Bank, Dr. Akinumi Adeshina, and the entire team from the African Development Bank, which is here in our country, the MEC for Economic Development in our province, and the Director General of our province, and all leaders and uh, officials of government, local government, provincial government, and our national government who are here with us today, business leaders, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, I would like to welcome you all to the official launch of this inaugural Africa Investment Forum of the African Development Bank, which will be held, as you have heard, from the president here in Johannesburg, in Houghton province, in our country, South Africa, in November this year. We as the Houghton provincial government are very pleased to have won the bid to host this biggest and quite incomparable investment platform on the African continent. I want to emphasize we won the bid. We didn't get this through favor, we won the bid. We put a very strong bid to host the Africa Investment Forum, and we demonstrated our strong credentials, firstly as a major proponent of the African economic integration and a key driver of Africa's industrialization and inter-Africa trade. Gauteng province contributes 35% to South Africa's GDP and between 8 to 10% to the total GDP of our continent. Undoubtedly, we are the industrial hub and the manufacturing workshop of sub-Saharan Africa. And with regard to finances and financial markets, 
Johannesburg is Africa's financial nerve center. We have the state-of-the-art infrastructure, a sound and investor-friendly regulatory environment underpinned by a very strong and efficient Gauteng Investment Center, which serves as our one-stop shop for fast-tracking applications and improving the ease of doing business in our province. Gauteng province also accounts for 71% of South Africa's investments in the different regions of our continent. Gauteng-based companies have invested more than $30 billion in different regions of our continent. As a provincial government, we work very closely in partnership with different regional and state governments across our continent. With regard to infrastructure, we have a, an infrastructure master plan, 15-year infrastructure master plan, with a portfolio of bankable projects that require more than $150 billion over 10 years. I want to emphasize, Mr. President, not in one year, <laughs> over 10 years. It is for this reason that as the provincial government, we take the opportunity to convey our heartfelt gratitude to President Adeshina and the team from the African Development Bank for giving us this unique opportunity to host Africa's first of its kind investment platform. It is an honor to receive a vote of confidence from one of the most influential, respected, and credible institutions of our continent, the AFDB. I want to assure the AFDB and all investors and business people who are with us here and those who are still to come to the forum in November that we are ready to host this groundbreaking investment platform for our continent. We have an impeccable track record in hosting continental and global events of the magnitude and significance represented by the Africa Investment Forum. We are a government that upholds ethical leadership and promotes good governance as the cornerstone of development, without which we can get nowhere. So your trust in us is not misplaced. We have the full support of our national government and municipalities in our province who are working together with us to prepare for the Africa Investment Forum. And we work through the Gauteng Investment Center to attract foreign direct investment in our country, in our province, and in the various cities of our province. So the Africa Investment Forum comes to South Africa at, at a very interesting era in the period of our country, and that is a period of renewed hope and optimism. So Mr. President, you just chose the right time to bring an investment forum of this magnitude to South Africa. Our country is back on track. Public sentiment is very positive and investor confidence is rising. And as I said during the State of the Province address that our people can dream again, they can dream again of a better life and a better Africa. Our brand new president, His Excellency, Mr. Cyril Ramaphosa has made investment and inclusive economy and good governance the cornerstones of his presidency. He has set a target of attracting $100 billion into the South African economy over a very short space of time. So what a timing. Because I think looking at the Africa Investment Forum, he can realize his goal just before the completion of one year in November. He has also appointed a powerful team of investment invoice to lead 
these investment initiatives to go to different parts of the world and talk to investors and business people to bring investment to South Africa, but to bring investment to Africa. So the November inaugural Africa Investment Forum fits very well with the investment drive that is led by our president. And this platform will be one of the most important for our government at a national, provincial, and local level, as well as businesses in our country, South Africa, and in the continent. The Investment Forum is the divorce of Africa, and it should be the divorce of Africa. Yes, Mr. President, it should be no talk shop, uh, and rather should become a, transac a transaction shop, if ever it must be a shop. <laughs> and it is a great platform to translate Africa's professed potential into real opportunity and progress. The matter of Africa's prospects and potential is discussed all the time. And once and for all, it must be settled. Africa's potential as an investment destination is articulated well by the World Economic Forum in a recent article, and I quote, Africa holds enormous potential for private investors. Since the turn of the millennium, it has been among the world's fastest growing regions. Although growth in some parts of Africa is fragile for the moment, the continent has an improving business environment, expanding internet connectivity, rising incomes, and shifting consumption patterns. These enduring trends have created an abundance of commercial opportunities across the continent transforming it into a market and an opportunity that investors can aff cannot afford to ignore, close quote. Mr. President, it is now time to turn Africa's potential into real progress that can be measured in the improvements in the quality of life and well-being of African populations across the continent and indeed the diaspora. As you said last night at the dinner we hosted, Mr. President, people cannot eat potential. They need real food on the table. I know for sure investors cannot be happy just with potential. Investors need good returns. The youth and the women in our continent need real business opportunities and they need real jobs. But for this to happen, Africa needs to move from aid to investment. And I believe Africa is ready for major investment as will be offered at the Africa Investment Forum. We as South Africans say South Africa is open for business again. And as Houghton Province, we are ready to host the Africa Investment Forum on behalf not only of South Africa, but on behalf of Africa. Thank you very much. Asante sana. Merci buku. Sia bonga. Reale boga. Apologies for the mic. We're now moving into a Q&A session. Uh, Honourable Premier, thank you very much for those words and uh, certainly another quote to borrow from the World Economic Forum is that the African train has left the station and you need to find a way to get on board or risk being left very far behind. On that note, I would like to point to Jaco Marie. So I didn't, uh, I'm sure you didn't expect this, but we are going to get a roving mic to Jaco Marie. Of course, he is former um, head of the Standard Bank Group and current chairman of Liberty. He's also one of the special investment envoy envoys that uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa has appointed to garner that $1 trillion investment over the next five years. And uh, Jaco, I think it would be appropriate for you to say a couple of words at this juncture, given the enthusiasm around the Africa Investment Forum. Well, thank you, Bronwyn, and uh, President Arsina, and 
Premier Makura, uh, great to be here. I can only uh, endorse what's been said. I think this is an incredible initiative, long overdue, uh, and having a focus on investment in Africa is clearly so critical, as we all know. Um, and I think it fits in very neatly with what we, as the special envoys uh, for the president here, are trying to achieve within South Africa. It's uh, Bronwyn, it's a, it's a trillion rand, not a trillion. A trillion rand. Oh, sorry, I didn't want to be that, that target too enormously. You must have had a heart attack. Over, there, Jack, over right? five years, but uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a subcomponent of what you're trying to do, and I think uh, the initiatives that we'll be launching will dovetail very nicely, uh, and we're incredibly supportive of this initiative of yours. So well done, and uh, we look to, to ride on your coattails and to also assist where we can. Thank you very much. So, Jacko, I hope that uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa doesn't take a cue from that and up your targets to that number. <laughs> My apologies if I've given you an enormous headache. I'd also like to hear from Etsepo Mathue, who is the CEO of Harith, who's also had an engagement with the African Development Bank and uh, perhaps can just highlight his experience uh, with the group Etsepo. Thanks for the opportunity, Bronwyn. I think from my point of view, what I'd just like to sort of like point out is that just, you know, in 2006, in 2006 when we set out to create like you know, an infrastructure fund focusing on, on the continent, you know, one of the biggest multilaterals told us it couldn't be done. And it was the FDB which took us around like, you know, over 10 countries on the continent which resulted in us, you know, which with the support of an entity like GPF, you know, raising over $600 million. And uh, out of that, you know, I could like, you know, affirm into like, you know, uh, the AFDP's, uh, you know, President of the Senate's involvement in some of the signature projects we've sort of like been able to do on the continent in a form of, you know, Lake Torkana in Kenya, the largest uh, renewable project like on the continent with 320 megawatts. Uh, as I told you, like uh, last week, we managed like uh, one of the investments we involved in, which is Azura in Nigeria, you know, which you're very much well aware of, closed, you know, within eight months of target, you know, and close to $900 million project. And uh, also on the back of that, I'd like to say, you know, after 10 years or 12 years in this, we've now together with, you know, our, you know, our AFC created one of the, the largest IPP on the continent with one8 you know, gigawatts of power is like mm -hmm. under the management. So we know what, uh, you know, what partnering with AFDB has done in terms of being able to unlock that potential. And we think that this, you know, talking deals, 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 or transaction, transaction, transaction is the language that we're very much looking forward to. Uh, thank you. So we're now going to take a Q&A from the audience. If you could observe the following protocol, please put your hand up. We will deploy a roving mic if you could state your name and where you're from and then address your question. Thank you. If we could uh, deploy a roving mic to the gentleman in the middle there. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Musa Shivambu. I'm from Mbeu Insurance. Uh, I'm very much excited about the initiative that Africa is taking. Uh, I only have one concern, though. And I would like to ask the leadership there that, you know, in Africa, we consume what we don't produce, and we produce what we don't consume. How do we then uh, correctly address that issue? And another thing is that such initiatives, uh, according to me as a young entrepreneur, they don't really dwell down into the details of how, you know, I hear you talk about a lot of numbers, the trillion funds there, all of this. Trillion rand. We yeah, must make sure trillion, we've got that on point. Exactly. Now. But it doesn't drill down to an individual to me on how to access such, right? It's, it's, it's mainly on, on, on high level. And, and such initiatives, I feel like they, they don't really include us as the youth, right? And I think we are the future of Africa. Such initiatives should include us as the youth to drive them going forward. Thank you. Thank you. President Adeshina? Yeah. Well, thanks very much, Musa. Let me just say that. Uh, you're not just the future of Africa, you're the present of it. And uh, this initiative, we wanted to make Africa a place the young people want to stay. Look, as president of the African Development Bank, anytime I turn on CNN and I see young people hanging onto rickety boats 
trying to get to the Mediterranean Sea to get to Europe. That's not the kind of Africa we want for our young people. We want an Africa that is growing very fast, fast-paced growth, why not double-digit growth, but with equitable growth, one that is able to create massive amount of jobs for our people. Look, if you take a look at even insects, insects migrate from where it's dark to where there's light. <laughs> right. And so we want an Africa that has universal access to electricity, where the quality of life is very, very good. Cities like Joburg and others that are very well functioning with water, with sanitation, great infrastructure, ICT facilities, rural areas that have access to infrastructure to turn them from zones of economic misery to zones of economic prosperity. That's the kind of Africa we want. But it requires massive amount of investment in roads, in rails, in ports, in aviation, um, in, 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 in uh, irrigation, and in financial market development and all of that. So that's what we're really talking about. You know, we're trying to develop a new kind of Africa that we want to be very proud of, not one where people move away from, one where people move to. So that's why the quantum numbers of amount we want to go, it's actually that. But on the young people, um, we are the African Development Bank. You know, we, we are investing massively. We have a program ourselves that's called Just for Africa's Youth. And that program is to help African countries to create 25 million jobs in the next 10 years and to impact 50 uh, a, a million, a million people as well. You know, and we have a fund that we actually just set up with the uh, European Union, which is a $200 million uh, fund, uh, which is called Boost Africa, which is supposed to support businesses like young people like yourself, early stage businesses that are high risk businesses. We at the bank have another program that's called the Enable Youth. You know, as you know, I was Minister of Agriculture in Nigeria, and uh, I was a minister that wear bow ties all the time for agriculture, because I think <laughs> agriculture is sexy, it's cool, it's the, it's the coolest business that you can have. The size of that business is going to be $1 trillion by 2030, in food industry alone. And so we want young people that are dynamic, entrepreneurial, get into that sector. Yesterday, I had a fantastic discussion with the Premier and also with the uh, uh, the commissioner in the provision council I mean, in the in the Huatin province about how we are going to bring exciting things for young people. You know, the future of agriculture, for example, you are not going to be looking at a farmer that is probably holding some hoe and cutlass. You are going to be looking at young people like yourself with applications, no jumpers, but probably working on your tools uh, with your apps to make agriculture cool and sexy. That's what we want. So, take this as a way in which we are trying to make Af Africa a cool place for investors to say. And that confidence is very important for the continent. And Premier, just to add, the youth very much at the centre of the growth in the Gauteng province, especially entrepreneurship, as referred to in the question. Yes, Seth. Uh, uh, Bronwyn, thank you very much for, th for that. Musa, you would know that uh, the, the youth is uh, very much at the centre of the agenda of uh, our provincial government. We have a program called CEPO 1 million, which focuses on uh, how to integrate young people into the economy, whether jobs or uh, as, as entrepreneurs. And, and I think for, for the conference, this, for, the, for the forum that we're talking about, the, the youth should be at the, agenda, at the center of the Africa Investment Forum, because Africa's greatest wealth is its youth. A dynamic, energetic, coming from any part of the continent, moving from places where there's nothing, uh, uh, in search of opportunities where there's something. And the African youth is something that, uh, uh, as, a, as a continent, the first thing we really need to invest in is to invest in our youth. Uh, because if they are not uh, having education, first and foremost, uh, they, you, they, they, they can become a major risk rather than our wealth. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so I, I certainly agree with you that uh, we need to be very, very concrete as we prepare for the forum to look at uh, in this platform. So what are the instruments, given, given the obstacles of any young people as in young entrepreneurs face, what are the obstacles that, that are there in the investment space and how do we unlock opportunities for them? So certainly young people, there can be no Africa today without the youth. The very death concept, conceptual understanding of Africa is the most youthful place on earth. 
So if you take out the youth, you have no Africa to talk about. So not passion, even the future. Youth, not even the close. future. <laughs> as the president says, the present, Africa as we have it, is the most youthful continent, and we can't change the well-being of people if we don't touch the youth. So that's why we're doing quite a lot on the on, on, in this area of youth development and unlocking opportunities for Premier, the youth. excuse me interrupting. I do just want to take three more questions from the audience. Uh, we will be hard out at 11 o'clock. Can I have three questions back to back? Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Elisa Momoanga. I'm from an organization called the Global Entrepreneurship Network Africa. So we have a presence in almost 41 African countries and we wanted to find out if we wanted to partner with this initiative, what would be the channels that we'd have to go through to, to work with you to achieve um, the objectives that you all are wonderfully trying to achieve? Thank you. Thank you. Could I take the next question? Could we move to this side of the room, please? Hi, my name is Karen Mundera from Forbes Africa, and thank you very much for that uh, well-informed presentation. Uh, Premier Makura, you spoke and said that um, investors would like to see real returns um, from what the investment money will be in. So I'd like to know what plans or policies will be put in place to ensure that the money is invested wisely and real returns are actually brought back. Thank you. And the final question. Thank you. So in the middle there. We're following a very democratic process in uh, addressing the right, the left, and the middle. Um, hello, all. My name is Olavi Salako from Osa Consulting. Um, my question actually goes to President Adishina. Uh, in the context of um, economic diversification and industrialization of the continent, um, I believe you agree with me that uh, uh, the bigger economies on the continent are meant to work together so that they can lift up the weaker economies. And when we look at um, countries like South Africa and Nigeria that are playing the very key roles in the context of making sure that the economies of the continent is up and running. Um, a country like South Africa is growing so fast in the sense that it's catching up with the fourth, in, fourth industrial revolution, better than the rest of Africa, most especially in, most especially in Nigeria. Nigeria is struggling, is even struggling to meet up with the third in, industrial revolution. Let's talk about the fourth in, industrial revolution. And you will agree with me that there's a high deficit of economic infrastructure in Nigeria presently. So uh, I'm going to have to move you along to the exact question. Running out of time, we've got about yeah, 10 minutes to close. Just, Thank you. Excuse me. We, we've got, uh, can you go to your question, please? Sir? Exactly, I'm, I'm getting there now. Thank you. My question is, in the Niger Delta region of Nigeria, there is a high, there is a serious uh, youth movement agitation that is hindering, impeding the industrialization of the economy. How can the African Development Bank work in collaboration with the NEPAD agency to solve the problem in that region through a proper public-private partnership initiative that will make industrialization thrive in the Nigerian in the Nigeria market? Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. So, valuable question, President Adeshina. If you'd like to start there, sir. Yeah, you know, I mean, so like, thanks for that question. You know, the one challenge that we face in Africa is uh, that of insecurity. Uh, in some areas, pockets that actually drives a number of young people out of out of rural areas. Mm -hmm. um, but it also is the fact that in many rural economies, you have very limited economic opportunities. So the young people are constantly uh, going. You know, the, the mayor. I mean, the, the mayor of this city. I spoke with him in uh, in Abidjan and the premier yesterday, and also with the uh, minister of finance. We were talking about uh, how things here. And uh, the Premier told me that uh, they get about roughly uh, 200,000 people move into this province uh, uh, every, every, every year. And so basically one of the ways in we have to do that is create new economic opportunities in rural areas so that folks can stay there. That's one thing. The second thing is that we often talk about the fact that it's a lot of unemployment for young people. Yes, that is true. You've got 10 million young people that enter the labor market every year, and only 3 million of them get jobs. 
But it's not sometimes that because there are no jobs. It's that they don't actually have the right skills for what the labor market is actually needing. So there needs to be a lot of investment to upgrade the skills of young people to match what the labor market actually is asking for. In particular, our educational systems, our curriculum, you know, we, 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 we like to put um, labels on people. I got master's in this. I got PhD in that. That doesn't mean anything. Uh, it's just a label. What the market needs are competences. So making sure that we have the right competences is very important. And then the other thing that I think is very, very uh, important in the case of the Niger Delta that you talk about also is that there must be transparency and equity in how natural resources are managed there and in other parts of Africa. One of the reasons why you have challenges is that um, the resources aren't very, very well, well managed. And sometimes you've got some cases where the countries get into bad deals uh, and negotiate uh, away their royalties and taxes and stuff like that because of asymmetry in negotiation power. So the African Development Bank has an instrument that is called the Africa Legal Support Facility, which we use to help countries to renegotiate contracts they've gotten into that are bad deals. We've done it so well. We did it for uh, Guinea, uh, uh, Guinea Bissau. We helped them to renegotiate their debt obligations to China down by 94%. So all I'm saying is that there has to be skills, there has to be revival of the rural economy, but there also has to be a lot of new ways of engaging to make sure the resources, natural resources for Africa, are used uh, for the benefit of the people uh, uh, of Africa. But can I jump in, Premier Makuru, if I could get you here to, to comment on the question from Forbes Africa on guaranteeing real returns and money being spent wisely. Well, I guess we, we can't guarantee real returns. Um, as government, we can guarantee that uh, the investment is uh, a safe, uh, because investment it, by its nature is risk and there are many factors that uh, determine uh, the rate of return. So any government that tells you you'll get good returns in advance, uh, I think it's really no government or they really don't know <laughs> what business entails. So there are things we can guarantee. South Africa is a very safe investment environment with very strong institutions, independent judiciary, uh, things do work. And that when I said things, we are back on track, even where there were problems with some of our public institutions, that is being fixed. There's a very strong leadership in the country. The Gen Africa question, I, I, we have worked with, the, with Gen Africa to host the Global Entrepreneurship Congress here in our, in our country. Gen Africa is, we are a partner as the Gauteng government and our municipalities so are working with Gen Africa. So we can discuss the details so about how we can involve you. Gen Africa has got an office here with, to look at, because the key thing is the, 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 the whole ecosystem of entrepreneurship. So the, con, the, the forum is going to provide opportunities, but it would not answer things that need to be sorted elsewhere. So I can, I, we work with them very closely, Mr. President, so yeah. we will discuss with them how they can participate. Yeah. If I might just say yes. a word on that, it's that, um, you know, in this particular forum, just think of what the world will have looked at like way back if nobody trusted Mark Zuckerberg, if nobody trusted investing in somebody called Bill Gates. You know, we as African Development Bank believe that there has to be, a, you know, a framework in which we provide targeted financial support to turn the ideas of young people into real powerful businesses on that continent. Yes. Just to give an idea why I really believe in this, I was with uh, President Paul Kagame just about two weeks ago, and he told me that he was jogging, um, and while jogging, there was a young lady who came up to him, um, and that his security guards actually put the young lady away, and he said, no, 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 Mr. President, you're the one that helped me to go to the Kigali Institute, Kigali Institute of Technology. I now have set up my business, and that business is doing well. So the President Kagame said, well, you know, I gave her some money uh, in, in uh, uh, Rwandan francs just to encourage her and stuff like that. And that he never heard from her again until recently she came by his office and said, well, that company has just been bought by an Asian company for $10 million. Just tells you what happens with the ideas of young people. So I know President Cyril Ramaphosa jogs as well. And so... <laughs> So I think that as the president jogs, I can tell you he's not just jogging because he wants to jog. He's a businessman. 
is jogging because he wants a, a, a South African that's productive. A, a healthy South Africa uh, is also going to be a more productive uh, in part South Africa. But I just thought I'll share that so that when President Cyril Ramaphosa is, jog is jogging, you young people can be there close to him as well. <laughs> so you might be able to get your businesses financed. We've got time with, for, for one final question. That was the first hand up. Thank you very much, sir. If we can deploy the mic. And then we are going to move to the signing of the memorandum. So, sir, if you could please stand, state your name, and uh, put your question swiftly to the panel. I've got the protocol. Uh, my name is Ricky Marima. I'm with um, strategy consultancy called Remnants, based here in Johannesburg, but we do work in other parts of the continent. Um, this question is really for Premier Makura, and possibly uh, Jacob Murray can help out. Uh, you mentioned in your, in your speech that um, as, a, as a province, you have invested 30 billion um, across the continent and also in Africa. Um, what are you committing to investing in, uh, in, in Africa during the, the Inve Africa Investment Forum, since the theme is transactions, transactions, transactions? And then um, also on um, looking at South Africa, um, what I've heard from the, the figure of a trillion uh, rand over five years, this sounds very much like inward investment. What is South Africa's commitment to outward investment over the same period, particularly into Africa? Thank you. Premier? Well, I, li I like that question. I wish it was posed first. Uh, the, I think the first thing is that South African, so when I say we, I don't mean the government. How based businesses, and I mean you, uh, the people in the private sector, how based businesses are very active in the different regions of our continent. Those figures I was quoting that more than $30 billion dollars of investments are in different parts of the continent are by Houghton-based businesses. So we're not just talking that there should be inter-Africa trade. It is happening. And, and Houghton-based businesses are leading the charge. These are South African companies, principally largely based uh, in our province. And we meet with them, we talk with them about where they have problems, how can we assist them in that. So it's not something to wait for the forum. It's already happening. But it's not the government, uh, it's the businesses. And I think that's the, the private sector should be the key driver of unlocking investment in our continent. So that, that's really happening already. Um, and so that question shouldn't arise at the, at the forum itself. Sometimes South Africans don't know how much, how much they are involved in the, in the continent. We, we have already bought the story. I think I sit with evidence that South African businesses have already bought the story that Africa is the future and that the next biggest frontier, investment frontier is here at home. Different parts of the globe have their own problems with, 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 the, with the economic climate and major difficulties. So, so we can address a lot of our own problems of growth by looking at the opportunities in our continent. That includes 49,000 jobs created by South Africa based businesses through their in investment activities in, in the continent. So that, that's a very, very uh, important point. That's what I'm saying. It's an important question, but it is already being answered by yourselves. You know the story better. That's so that Sepo can talk about what they are already doing in Nigeria Premier, and in, gonna, in East Africa. We're going to move to the signing of the memorandum in just one moment, but I do just want to uh, take into account the audience across Africa right now, 48 countries across the African continent that CNBC Africa is broadcasting to. A final word, President Adeshina, to uh, those countries, to the audiences watching across the continent, especially on the theme of outward investment uh, that was brought to the table a moment ago, and uh, followed by Premier Makura. And then I'm going to ask uh, for our dignitaries to please come up to the table for the signing of the memorandum. A short comment, each gentleman. Sir. Well, first and foremost, I think uh, for the rest of Africa, this is Africa's time, there's no doubt about it. Uh, I think God has always blessed Africa tremendously. We have mineral, we have oil, we have gas, we have tremendous amount of agricultural potential. 65% of the arable land left to feed the world is not in Asia, in Latin America, or in Europe, it's actually in Africa. So Africa is the place to be. This Africa Investment Forum is to help Africa to unlock its potential. I don't believe Africa should develop by begging. I think Africa should develop by the discipline of investment. 
and attracting the capital necessary to do that. And the Africa Investment Forum is exactly that platform to make sure that investors from across the world can land their investment in Africa, like on a very nice landing strip in which everything is very well organized. I'm very, very confident that Africa will mobilize that capital because if you think of anywhere to invest in, that is the frontier. Africa is that place. And so we look forward to working with you all and welcoming all the global players to Africa on this platform. Thank you. Premier Makura. If Africa is the place to be for all the investors, the best place to see Africa is from the south. <laughs> <laughs> and that South Africa is the place to look at Africa's opportunities better, and Gauteng has that, those capabilities to help you see Africa well. And now we see it again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If I could now call, please, on the Secretary General of the African Development Bank, Vincent Nemahile, and the Director General of the Gauteng Province, Ms. Pindile Balini, to go to the signing table to sign the Memorandum of Agreement. Thank you very much. If you could come up to the stage, and if we could have our principals, please, taking a position behind them. Thank you. Is legal happy? Everything done? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the signing of the official launch of the Africa Investment Forum, 7th to the 9th of November 2018, Johannesburg, Gauteng Province. Thank you so much. And at this point, we say goodbye to our audience across the African continent. Thank you so much for the attendees in the room. We do have a networking function outside, so the deal-making, ladies and gentlemen, can begin. Thank you.